Hello, this is uh, Dave and welcome to Equity Story. I'm here with The Wolf and this is just a general share advice and not personal advice. Wolfie, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, SGM, mm -hmm. having a good move. Now, we, we put a $22, $22 target price on this. Um, it's sort of got a bit of an exhaustion pattern or nearing it. So, um, I, you know, don't worry about 22 2181 2179 Our advice is to take a profit, right? So it's had a good run, good little tra trade. Uh, I think that's a nice little, uh, nice little profit wolf. Well, well, quite a big profit, isn't it? What about 20% or something? Um, I, think, I, think, I think we went in the 16. So yeah, I'll stop showing off. Oh my God. Yes. I have to, I have to. Uh, right. Just, just no, one, a... no one else gives me praise. Stop. It was my idea anyway. Stop showing off. Um, uh, okay, good, uh, good, um, good trend, and good to see some trends hitting, uh, hitting targets. Mm. Um, Wolf, before we we look at the, there's a number of stories that had some pretty interesting upgrades on um, by some of the major brokers. So we'll have a look at those and see if we we see any uh, if we agree with them, right? Because mm. uh, obviously, uh, uh, what we say is much more important than Macquarie Group or Citigroup or or, or Morgan Stanley or anyone like that. Yeah. Right. Um, but we'll, we'll obviously, we'll, you know, we'll see what they've got to say and we'll, we'll have a look at it. Um, but um, before we do that, can we have a look at some of today's announcements? Now, Telstra. Mm -hmm. they've got I, I, I need to rehash my yeah, yesterday's talk about, you know, looking for a new CEO. They've actually found a new CEO, Dave. Um, so, you know, we talked about is there, a, is there a risk finding a new CEO? Of course, there's going to be a risk, but really the risk is now pretty much put to, put to bed because they've actually hired someone internal and that's Vicky Brady. So well done to Telstra. Uh, and really, I think the, the strategy of what Andrew Penn has been running for the last couple of years, turning the whole business around, he did all the hard, hard yards. That's probably just going to continue. So potentially Vicky is going to be on a good wicket here. Well, precisely, and and she's got a great record, a great history, and uh, go the girls, and we we can see the differences. You know, we brought a girl into Equity Story. It's it's made a massive difference, uh, Karen. Uh, you know, so much. We know what time of day it is. Um, you know, we know so much. We know everything pretty much. Before we had just blindly doing stuff. Now it's all like clock, clockwork, Dave. Yeah, but the important thing is that she's going to keep the same policies. She's there. She's part of the team. So yes. steady as she goes, and and I think yeah. uh, uh, it's just and it's a holding above trends. So if you're in the story, just hold it. Now mm -hmm. CXO, some more good draw results, Wolf. Yes, yes. Look at look at the share price. It's going berserko. So remember, this is old favored, favored um, lithium story, and you know we've talked about the reasons, and you know there's lots of interesting stories out there in the lithium space. Don't get me wrong, there are, but we prefer this one because it's close to home. In Australia, it's got a nice little resource that they own 100% of. So there's, you know, fairly simple structure, ownership structure, tick. Um, capex is fairly small, tick. They're going to be producing probably quicker than anyone else out there, tick. So there's a lot of things to like. So they've come up with more drilling results, which some some nice, some okay-ish, you know. So overall, they're looking to expand the resource, which is which is fairly small comparing to some of the other big ones. So that's a good thing, right? So overall, that's what we like. The only thing we don't like, Dave, is, is the valuation. It is just ridiculously high. But remember, at the moment, just for lithium, valuations are probably not very important. Yeah, but Wolf, you know, you used to say that about tech stocks. And now I know, they're going I know. Down. And, I so, know. and so these will go down by half eventually. One day right? they will. One so, day they will. Right. So, so remember your lessons, Wolf. Yes. Remember yes. your historical lessons. Yes. Yes, and and uh, and stop dreaming. So you you've got to be very at the moment until the music stops. Well, you've got to be very careful, right? <laughs> so tight stops. So and yes. these drill results were uh, were good, right? Over two, yeah. Over there's three. There's some great, there's some great hits, and I'm not so great hits. So it was a pretty mixed bag. But I think overall, more about adding more tons to the small risks they've got, right? So for me, that looks decent. Right. So if you're in this story. And um, mm -hmm. we, we have suggested it. Yeah. Uh, you've got a stop loss. If it goes under 120, you get out on a daily. Correct. Right. In fact, I agree. Yeah. In fact, you know what? I'm going to give you a better one. If it goes under 116, oh, that's too far away. Yeah, it is. 
Uh, let's keep it tight. I reckon because, you know, these things can be very volatile, especially when you see a chart, like you put it on a weekly, Dave, and it was ridiculously almost vertical, right? So let's keep it tight. Keep all our profits together. So yeah. I, I like that one under 120 is good. Okay, 120, we're going to do that. Let's have a look how that looks on the daily. Yeah, I think there's support Perfect. there. 120. So 119, 118 on the daily is your yep. stop loss. Towards the yeah. end of the day, on the mm -hmm. daily, then that's when you get out of it. Yep. And that makes sense, doesn't it, on that? That would overshadow stop making that previous kind 100%. of... 100%. Yeah. Oh. And if it goes higher, Dave, we'll revise it even higher to even, you know, tighten it even more. But I think I like that. It's it's a good strategy. Okay. Um, TLG. Mm -hmm. um, they're based in uh, Scandinavia. Yep. In Sweden. In Sweden. Sweden. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. You I know. like Sweden. I like to go there and have a look. I don't know. When, when I told you, I, I used to have a Swedish girlfriend. Very good looking. But every time she talked. Like, you always punch above your weight, Dave. It's very, very interesting. But every it? time she talked, it used to put me to sleep. As soon as they start going, hello, David. What are we going to do tonight? Went, oh, please, please. Oh. Well, this is the way they talk. All it's our like... Swedish friends, all our Swedish members, please don't take this. No, it's a rhythm. And it's a rhythm the way they talk. What? We love you all. We love you all. Anyway, Us, I'm, 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 as you can see, time. you can't see me today because I'm having a bad hair day. Yes, I can see. You never have a bad hair day, do you, Wolf? No, Dave. That's that's, that's the beauty right. about going bald. All right. All, all right. right. So, Tolga. Now, let me tell you about Tolga. So, we know that this is a great graphite play, right? We knew about that a long, long, long time ago. We traded it a couple of times. Um, one of the highest grades Swedish graphite deposits globally so they've branched out they've went into that um what can we do with these graphites uh and they've come up with these new um that we move on anodes right they've been working on it so they're looking at a technology where they can use it in potentially ev vehicles or the batteries right so they come up with these anodes uh called tell some tell, tell g or something tell t i can't remember what it is called but anyway proprietary technology, right? Anodes. Um, I like the technology, Dave. I think it's great. Remember, an EV battery, electric vehicle battery, the lithium battery, one of the most critical components is the, is, the, is the anode. So definitely, this is something that interests me greatly. However, I need to see the commercialization side of this. So today, they've announced that uh, I think there's going to be like all the dignitaries, you know, the, everyone coming out because they are going to opening this this uh this factory for these uh, anodes so commercial commercialization is pretty much on the doorstep i just want to see how they're going to start selling these things right because there's a lot of different variations of anodes out there um in this space and there's a lot of companies actually produce them so we want to see whether they can actually muscle in and really be successful in this space so i like it definitely on my watch list and if they start, to, you know, start getting the, those um, revenues going, Dave, we're probably going to jump in. But I love the trade. Maybe there's already a trade in this. So I'm going to leave it to you. But from a fundamental point of view for me, just slightly too early. I just need to see a little bit more. I, I like that, Wolf. And <clears throat> you know what? If someone was going to buy this, you pay 161. You've got your stop loss 148. Mm. Uh, you know what we always say? There's good trades. And there's, there's, uh, I'm still not convinced about the chart. You see how it's moved before, mm -hmm. Wolf? We've mm -hmm. had similar breakouts. You go back here. It's just been a little bit messy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the history of the, the way the chart moves, I think, ah, not really that interested, Wolfie. Okay. Well, let's let's keep it a closer eye on because, like I said, this could this announcement could potentially bring in new investors because it's on the cusp of com commercialization. So if it starts moving up even further by tomorrow or next week, then maybe we'll, maybe it will look a little bit different for you, Dave. Wolf CXL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um good news today i've called it a sell actually last week because i thought there'd be a lot of resistance there uh it still looks like that resistance is yeah. is, is pretty strong so i still think that's the right call classic exhaustion pattern mm -hmm. um you know for me this this is it's expensive it needs to go sideways for a while wolf i agree i look a nice announcement today by the way from cxl but i think it's more like a you know buy on rumor sell on fact um and possibly that eight dollars could be a bit of a bridge too far um the announcement today was i think today together with pls they've got some technology to to process uh lithium 
uh, where they're using calcinator. So it's interesting technology for sure, CXL. Uh, and from that point of view, um, that's why I'm interested. That's why we've been, we've been trading this quite a lot. But you know, since it's gone from a dollar to eight bucks in less than a year, I think it's just way, way too much for me. Well, if, uh, good, you know, you're starting to see some of these uranium stocks, Vimy uh, mm -hmm. and DYL tying mm -hmm. up together. Mm -hmm. Really more like a Vimy uh, takeover around that sort of 28, 30, 30 yep. cents. Correct. Correct. So good, good, good for Vimy shareholders. And look, um, it, 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 look it's, a, it's a good for both probably shareholders because they, you know, you need probably scale and size in this space. Um, it is all script. So, you know, the price could fluctuate depending on what DPLO is, what price. So, yeah. In a way, it's okay, um, but it is good that there's actually marriages in this space because it's going to maybe put more spotlight into the uranium space. Wolf, uh, yesterday I had a, a, actually I had a text, believe it or not, um, mm -hmm. in the middle of the night from Matt Reddy, the mm -hmm. CEO of AV1, going, Dave, mm -hmm. I'm in Sydney. Can we meet up uh, yesterday? So I went in the city, uh, met up in a nice little bar, I didn't have any drinks, just coffee, Wolf. You'd be good to know. Wow. And, uh, and obviously asked Matt how it's all going. And I, certainly uh, what I can say, Matt did say um, all the news would happen uh, Q2 this year. Mm -hmm. He believed uh, all the sort of uh, the sort of more exciting contracts would all get signed up around this sort of uh, time. And Let's he, talk tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and, he, and basically what he said, he's sticking, he's sticking by, his, uh, by his forecasts. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that's, he, great, that's great news. Yeah, it is good. It is good news. And uh, nice guy as well. Like, I mean, and... Uh, oh, we know he's a good guy, isn't he? I mean, the way he spoke to us on the video, he yeah, came across very, very well. Yeah, uh, no, very. And, you know, just great to see such a, a young CEO, Wolf, with so much go about him. I mean, all well, he... I, I, I like the story. You know, you know the, we, we like the story because we, we had a chat to him and... Uh, you know what I did learn, which is yeah, interesting? Go on. Go on. Okay, go this is... Right, um, that his wife is actually a chartered accountant. How useful is that? How useful is that? In what sense? Well, she works somewhere else, right? But how useful is that? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, being oh, able yeah, to get to the books, absolutely. <laughs> well, at least you, you know, at least when you're you're going back home and you're having steak and kidney pie with the wife you know she's going to come back and give you some really good feedback isn't she and if you if you're taught i mean it's great to have a wife like that all right all right well and look you're on you're on to the females today so i'm just going to let it go dave okay okay all right okay um so <laughs> what else we've got so anyway it's just um, when i go home i have to talk about dresses we're gonna wait for that i have to, to, I have to talk about dresses and I know, makeup, I know. makeup. It's, it's like an escape to you isn't it? coming to yeah. work you're going ah oh, thank god i'm here i have to go yeah that color does look good with that top <laughs> i don't know it's like i think it's 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 it, i i was the uh, i'm not saying i'm jealous i love i love clothes and uh but anyway hey uh, anyway i just wanted to go just to finish off an av1 obviously we're going to coming up into the quarterly session. So we're going to be looking at it and potentially Dave post the quarterly, we might have another video with uh, Mr. Reddy. Yeah, no, it's, it, we're hoping pre before the quarterly. I think we should do it after, I think. I mean, then we can discuss the numbers. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, <laughs> well, he ain't going to give us numbers obviously before, is he? Exactly. That, that, exactly. Would be a, that would be a scoop. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> All right. We well, believe well, it comes up with a with a quarterly, so then we've right. got something to talk about. We'll, we'll wait till after. Um, now, Wolf, there were some broker yes. upgrades and some interesting ones. Uh -huh. um, um, well, wasn't there? Big, up big, big upgrades, by the way, too, wasn't there? Okay. BHP. Uh, what, what so was, uh, can we start with S thirty two? Yeah, absolutely. You can start whatever we whatever you like. So, good chart. Yes. You want to buy things when you go out. Now, Macquarie. I know mm -hmm. they're very bullish at the moment of, of commodity prices. Uh, they that what they're saying, you know, coking coal, aluminium, nickel, S thirty two's basically got it all. They're expecting uh, some big upsides in earnings. Uh, they're looking at sort of one point three billion earnings upside at Illawarra, four hundred and eighty million at Karamatuso, and about five hundred and fifty million at their Magnanese operations. Now, they've whacked the target price at seven dollars. It's huge, isn't it? And you know what? If if Macquarie's um, assumptions come true, 
they are going to have, they're going to be swimming in cash. So basically, I'd say it's going to be more buybacks. It's going to be probably extra dividends, special dividends giving back to the shareholders. So it could be quite an interesting, exciting time for S32 shareholders over the next six to 12 months. That's why if I'm in this, I know we talked about it that, you know, there's going to be some volatility potentially with the Ukraine, Russia, if there is a, some sort of a ceasefire, but we're still not seeing that happening. However, you know, I've got my finger on the trigger, but I'm reluctant to pull it because I know that at the moment, S32 is going very, very well. Um, so I'm going to hold up as long as I can. So with Macquarie coming out with such a bullish assumptions, Dave, it makes me want to hold on longer, <laughs> for sure. There's still a hold for me. Okay, if you weren't in it, would you buy it? Um, look, I'd love to buy it closer on a on a bad day, right? On one or two bad days. So I I think I tend to want to be just pick my moments better. Uh, I look, I don't know, maybe just my just my personal thing. Maybe get it closer to five bucks. Maybe use the daily, Dave, as your put a cheeky bid in at five bucks, maybe. Um, but I'll leave it to you. Look, I, I, you look, you're the expert in the techs. I'm obviously very happy to hold it and I'm very happy to buy it, but I just want to buy it. So it gives me a bit more, less risk, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and what you're, what you're saying, that it, it, I mean, it is looking very bullish now. It is looking like it's going to go higher over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. But because of all these issues, like one minute there's a piece of cord on, one minute start, uh, exactly right. we're possibly going to get sideways. So if you could if you could buy this mm -hmm. somewhere around 450, right? Oh. Or even 460, right? 470, okay. you'd, be, you'd be jumping in. So, um, uh, you know, get it on your watch list. Yeah. Uh, Wolf. BHP. Yes. Now this has been a, another very, very, very bullish. I mean, Macquarie are, are very, very bullish at the moment. And you know mm -hmm. what we do? Out of all the ones that we do follow a bit, Macquarie is one of those because I think they tend to get it right, more right than wrong, don't they? Uh, I, I, absolutely. And I, I, if 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 I have my if I have a favourite right of all the brokers out there, it has to be Macquarie. First of all, they are excellent will and dealers, right? Uh, commodity dealers, so they know the stuff inside out, probably in the commodity space. So when you, whenever they, you never see them moving their assumptions around for the commodities, you've got to take notice for sure. So I am just basing my views on historical facts. Um, so that's why I think if, if anyone wants to be believed, it's probably Macquarie. Okay, so again, uh, mm -hmm. elevated iron ore and and coke and coal spot prices, right? It's all it's all adding up for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, I'd wait to the end of the week. If this is looking like this by the end of the week, I'd buy it. They've got a target price of sixty sixty dollars on this wolf. Yeah, that's that's huge again, isn't it? So obviously, they've moved their commodity assumptions up there. <laughs> no doubt, but look, they would not do it without a reason uh, and a valid reason for that. So. You could see it happening. You could see it happening. There's a, there's a lot of brokers out there that are still probably using like seventy, eighty dollars iron ore price, Dave. And if that's the, if that's, you know, if that doesn't come out and it is actually there's going to be a lot of broker upgrades. If we're going to um, see the iron ore price at hundred. Well, if this looks like this by Friday, you're buying BHP, and I'll put it on as a trade on Friday. Uh, Wolf, Bub. Now I know mm -hmm. you've liked Bub. I mean, look at it really since this broke trend. It looks terrible. Um, mm -hmm. Citigroup. Yep. So it's obviously a really genius of an analyst in Citigroup mm -hmm. who's come out with this amazing uh, possibility, that amazing idea that apparently there's going to be a lot more babies being made in China. And that means they're all going to be uh, drinking their goat milk. Now, I think that's just a little bit too, too simple for me. Uh, one is that I've had five babies and I would never give them goat milk. Um, right. So I don't know if that really plays out like that. Um, yes, I understand that you allow more than one one baby in China. I, I get it. I, I, don't, I just don't see that as a reason. I mean, maybe I'm being a bit of a bitch here tonight, today, but I don't see that as a reason to suddenly whop on a, an amazing 49% premium to the share price. You want a bit of a war path today, I have to admit. So, um, look, I, I well, think you're well, old, old, old school, right? Cow's milk is the, that's the only thing. I, I think there's a change, Dave, happening. I think people want, first of all, variety. They're obviously looking at this lactose intolerance, which is a lot of people have, and goat milk is much, much better for that. That's why I am on goat, goat milk. 
So what, I, you're on baby food formula. No, I, I like my gold pro goat products. Oh, uh, okay. It's easier to digest, right? Oh, okay. And there's issues out there. And unfortunately, it's probably because, because of environmental issues and all the other stuff that's going on. So um, we're suffering. We need, to, we need to look at alternatives to normal cow's milk and goat provides that. So I think it's a growing industry. Um, I don't, you know, maybe it's not going to be like a, as popular as cows, but there's definitely a niche positioning with bub. And it's getting better, so I, I understand where they're coming from. Yeah, but I, I think I think I think those things that you said are true, Wolf. But the latest milks are all going to be things stuff like oat milk, uh, much Possibly. more, Look, much much the... more healthier, and, and 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 also there's human milk, which is quite good apparently, <laughs> which actually babies like more than ever. Which uh, maybe yeah, maybe probably. they'll maybe they'll bring. But, but that look, back. Dave, I think it's an alternative, right? It's an alternative that people will probably still use. Um, God knows what the the end market will be for it like, but I think there's it's a growing market, and like I said, I am loving all my goat goat milk, and like you said, there's probably going to be people that are going to be loving all those oat milk type stuff, right? So people are moving away from the traditional stuff and moving to alternative stuff. So, but I don't also I don't know how long that they put on this. Like, it's gonna. I mean, I do know having five kids, it takes it takes nine months, and you've got to make a baby, ten months to make a baby, right? So, I mean. Uh, well, I'm glad you know your so stuff. The, right. Yeah. I, I mean, but surely the city guy would know that. And so it's obviously not going to be immediate till all these babies, all, all these babies are born. I, I just don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not knocking whoever this guy is. He's obviously, he's obviously gone to university um, and he obviously knows about babies and he knows it's nine months the baby pops out. But I'm, no, I'm, I'm not buying this one, Wolf. All right. No, fair, look, fair enough. I, I'm, 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 I'm always interested in it because I like my goat. So I'm literally maybe biased than you. Um, so I'm watching it for when is a good time to maybe have a look at it. It's too early for me, 100%. But, you know, it's on my watch list. Not, not the top of my watch list. It's probably in the bottom somewhere, but it's still on my watch list. It's not, hasn't left it. But yeah, I agree with you. Look, it's, it's, I'm not as bullish as maybe the, the broker either. Okay. L let's talk about uh, Costa Group. Yeah. Because the great thing is that for us, Wolf, we, we know anyway where it's going, mostly if we get the charts right. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't do us any harm to just see what they, they're all talking about. Um, Credit Suisse um, went on site, had a look. They have put a 370 target price. I sort of get that. There's a bit of resistance on that. It might do that, right? It is a back above trend. And uh, the reason, the, the old tomatoes, tomatoes, tomato... You say tomato, I say tomato. What? Are you are you American or are you English, Dave? Which way would you rather be? Uh, Dave? Tomato. 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 No, no, tomato. <laughs> Do you gotta get it right? It's not tomato. Tomato. Oh, so, sorry, I, I'm not. I'm not as posh as you. Um, would you like a tomato? What? I love my tomatoes. So yes. yeah. So I I I, don't, I get it. I, I obviously tomatoes are highly profitable. They're having mm -hmm. a really good, uh, so there's some logic, but at the moment we're not buying it because the chart doesn't look good enough. No, fair enough. Right. Can, I, can I just ask you, okay, hang on, before you go to the next one, I just want to go back one step because you talked about S32, you talked about BHP. Did, did, did the brokers come up with a change for IGO at all? IGO. Yeah, because that's another one we should just have a quick look at because we're trending it and we've been playing with it and it's you know one of our favorite stocks as well. So. Can we just have a look at that one too before we go into anything else? Let's have a look. See, let's have it. a look. I don't. I haven't seen anything yet recently with IGO, but let's have a look, Wolf. Because there was a, there was an article in the Stockhead um, praising IGO, AKE, I think, and there's another one. They think that the, the, the top three that's lithium plays that you can possibly do. Okay, well, let's have a look at the IGO chart, um, and uh, we can have a look at this. So uh, we know the chart's an absolute beauty. Right. So I had a buy signal on Einstein's two weeks ago. We told everyone to buy on the breakout. It's looking mm -hmm. very, very good. So what are the target prices? I've yes. got I've got a, a Credit Suisse around 15. Yep. I've got actually Citigroup. I've got about 14 where it's hit that target price. Uh, yeah. Morgan Stanley, they're, they're under waiting it, waiting it around 11, $11. Um, so what is our price target then from, from, from our point of view? What are we looking at here? Where do the charts? I think the charts look like they could, they could test somewhere just under that fifteen, definitely. Okay. 
All right. So for everyone out, out there, you know, we looked at the the charts of BHP and S32, but I, don't let's not forget about IGO because it's going extremely well too. And then you've got a price target of 15. Thank you, Dave, for that. I just wanted to mention that because it's a stuff that's it's a beautiful story. All right. All right. Um, there's one more story that I want to talk about, which is interesting. Yes. And, and I think we we've got to we've got to talk. We, we, if we're going to put one on Wolf, we're going to put this one on. STO. Nope. Are you going for it? Are you? Yeah, because at the end of the day, Wolf, it's it's called uh, Spanish call it cojones. Yes, um, I know. Right. So there's been a lot of, I think you saw something on Livewire today, which is yes. some good articles on Livewire mm. all the time, right? Yes. And uh, they, they're they talking that this could uh, potentially be a lot higher. Than I'm sorry, of 250%. I think that that's what the... Okay, well, I'm not going for 250%. That's what the headline was. But I'm certainly liking the, the target mm -hmm. price of Macquarie around $10.50, yeah? Okay. So... Um, the reason being, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of read this to you. Oh, uh, so Santos 2022 climate change report has suggested a significant increase in new energies expenditures to support accelerated emissions reduction targets. With Macquarie noting the company aims for a 30% reduction by 2030 and net zero emissions by 2040. Investment in carbon capture and storage and hydrogen projects is necessary to targets. And the company suggested a potential US 5 billion, up to 30% of the company's 230 expenditure could be committed to this based on the company's equity levels in projects. Mm -hmm. According to the broker, the Bayou, Udan and Reindeer CCS projects look more likely to proceed following the company's recommitment to credible decarbonization. So outperform rating. So the, they're really liking the, this, green, this uh, green side to Santos. Yeah, the, uh, why not? I mean, this is you, the, these companies have to go down that way, right? Um, so if you're going to play with a oiler, this seems like a pretty good bet, right? Um, it's one of the biggest Asian producers as well. It's, it's, you know, after swallowing up uh, OSH, you're looking at a company that's now got really big production in uh, in PNG. So from that point of view, Dave, I think uh, Macquarie is onto something, and I think we maybe need to go get on jump on the board. Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, you've got maybe a 10%, you know, if you put your stop loss on the trend line where it's found support before, say just where it's at $7. So stop loss at like maybe 680. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's about 11%, but your upside is around 25, 30%. So I think we've got good risk reward in that wolf. Okay. I like it. Yeah. You're happy with that trend? Yeah. I'm happy with that. Look, it, it's conservative. It I'm giving a lot of room to breathe because I know we're going to be, it's going to be sort of well, exactly. You need to give it a bit of a room to breathe. Absolutely. So that's good. Uh, and uh, I'm a happy wolf because uh, all the trends are, are doing very well. Did we talk about, uh, we spoke about SGM, didn't we? Um, which one? SGN. SGM. Oh, SGM. No, we, I don't think we have. Oh yeah. Have we right Sims. at the beginning? Yeah. What well, we said, to, yeah, yeah, take a profit. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. You've yeah. You've done that. Sorry. We, we've been going for such a long time that I think maybe we should call, call it quits now. All right. Well done, Wolfie. Tomorrow's a big day. Thanks, Wolfie. All right. Bye, see mate. you guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.